Truly, the very view of the country was a melancholy thing. For those places which were before adorned with trees and pleasant gardens were now become a desolate country every way, and its trees were all cut down. Nor could any foreigner that had formerly seen Judea and the most beautiful suburbs of the city and now saw it as a desert, but lament and mourn sadly at so great a change, for the war had laid all the signs of beauty to waste. The multitude of carcasses that lay in heaps one upon another was a horrible sight and produced a pestilential stench, which was a hindrance to those that would make attacks out of the city and fight the enemy. While the holy house was on fire, everything was plundered that came to hand, and 10,000 of those that were caught were slain. Nor was there any pity for age or any reverence of gravity, but children and old men and profane persons and priests were all slain in the same manner so that this war went round all sorts of men and brought them to destruction. And as well as those that made supplication for their lives, as those that defended themselves by fighting. The flame was also carried a long way and made an echo together with the groans of those that were slain. For one would have thought that the hill itself on which the temple stood was seething hot as full of fire on every part of it, that the blood was larger in quantity than the fire, and those that were slain more in number than those that slew them. For the ground did nowhere appear visible for the dead bodies that lay on it, but the soldiers went over heaps of those bodies as they ran upon such as fled from them. And now the Romans, upon the flight of the seditious into the city, and upon the burning of the holy house itself, and of all the buildings round about it, brought their banners to the temple, and set them over against its eastern gate. And there did they offer sacrifices to them, and there did they make Titus imperator with the greatest acclamations of joy. Then the Romans set fire to the outer parts of the city, and burnt them to the ground, and entirely demolished its walls. Now, as soon as their army had no more people to slay or to plunder, because there remained none to be the object of their fury, Titus Caesar gave orders that they should now demolish the entire city and the temple itself. This was the beginning of Judea's apocalypse.